Aloha. We're now talking about the overall advance from the years 1990 to 2012. This is chapter 11 in your text. Uh, last time in the China Shoe Factory's presentation, I introduced a little bit about myself, and I have just a few more slides to continue to introduce myself. This was my staff in China in 1994. All the uh, people we had working for us at Payless, there I am in the center, and this was a seminar we held in 1994 in Tianjin in the north. And then these are my five direct reports. That's me, a guy named Wayne Yan, Robert Ho, uh, Andy Xie, Henry Hong, and uh, Jesse Lei, who all came over from China to attend a, an, an event in Topeka, Kansas. In, 19, in 1994, Payless had 1,950 stores. Payless had approximately 4,000 stores in 1998. They declared bankruptcy in 2017 and closed all its stores. Kind of a sad story. All right, in page 527 in your text, to retain control of its state and society, the party cast its lot with rapid economic development. This prompted the party to close ranks. Jiang Zheming and Zhu Rongqi developed a good working relationship regarding economic policy. Jiang Zheming was the general secretary from 1989 to 2002 and president from 1993 to 2003. And here's a picture of Jiang Zheming. He's now 96 years old. Zhu Rongqi was the vice premier from 1993 to 1998 and the premier from 1998 to 2003. They understood that economic development was now the clear priority. Without fast economic growth, there could be no political stability. Jiang's policy signaled a return towards elitism. There were three forces, advanced productive forces, advanced culture, fundamental interest in the overwhelming majority. There's a picture of Zhu Rongqi, and he's currently 94 years old. These guys are, have lived a long time. By 2006, Chinese Communist Party membership was more diverse and larger, slightly more than 70 million party members. China established standardized exams for civil servants in central government. In 2008, about 775,000 people attended the exams, competing for 13,500 positions. Pretty competitive. China built one of the most competitive systems in the world to recruit and promote government and state personnel. By 2008, some 900 million people in more than 734,000 villages had voted in the elections of about 3.2 million village leaders. However, village elections were not meant to lead to a democ democratization of the political system. By establishing a socialist market economy, China would experience the fastest economic growth of any society in history. China's institutional innovations can be grouped into six categories. And I'm going to stop there and take up the six categories in the next part.